This is Mile High. We have to do it better in order to move people along. Up, down, inside out. If you get your mind right, it is not. It is a receiver of thought. Because love is my first technique. It's now time for the show. Hello and welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles. I'm grateful to have all our fans and listeners. And whether you are listening this to this on iTunes or Stitcher or Facebook or YouTube or wherever the place you're catching the audio or video of this, I want to encourage you to please subscribe as well as share the episodes that you enjoy most with your friends. And I know this is going to be one of the episodes that you absolutely enjoy most. The other quick announcement I would like to share is um, to make sure to mark in stone on your calendar the um, Mile High Chiropractic Movement Weekend. It's August 17th to 20th and you can register if you have not yet at www.milehighchiro.org. You want to most absolutely be there. It's going to be the best Mile High Chiropractic Weekend yet. And so I am excited to be here with uh, our guest, who's one of my favorite people in chiropractic, without a doubt, um, which is Miss Dana Pittner. And um, she is a chiropractic professional with 20 years of experience in chiropractic. And you honestly, you can't say that about a lot of people. You can't even say that about a lot of chiropractors, okay? Um, but she really has done incredible things working with chiropractic teams, currently with um, Petty Michaels and Associates and a chiropractic office and consulting. And so please welcome, um, do oh, I almost said doctor, <laughs> Dana Pittner. Thank you for joining us, Dana. Thank you for having me, Dr. Knowles. Um, that last part about Dr. Dana, that is not <laughs> the first time that has happened. And um, I do take it as a grain of salt, but actually um, I'm very blessed to be in the profession with wonderful doctors, and I would never want to ever take their place. Um, that's what I let everybody know. I don't have the magic hands. I like to use my voice and my smile, and I'm extremely excited to be here today. So thank you. And we're excited to have you. I've I've gotten I've had the the privilege of seeing you present multiple times um, at Sherman College Lyceum. Um, at the Epoch in Nebraska, where we first met, um, yeah. which was which was awesome. So uh, I'm really grateful for all you give into chiropractic. Now, first of all, introducing you, you, you know, we introduced you as a chiropractic professional. Now, why, why? Because chiropractic assistant is such a use, you know, commonly used term. Why do you see yourself more than oh, just a chiropractic assistant? Um, I'm making that very clear because working with chiropractic assistants nationally, they are not necessarily recognized in a hierarchy as I believe that they should be. And I'm saying this very loud today that we are not just, just anything. There was a teacher at my kid's school once that said, if you put just with anything, you bring it down. Right. So we are chiropractic assistants. The goal of every professional that I've ever worked with in an office when I'm doing hiring is that I let them know that they can be as big as the doctor. And they've only allowed themselves to be where they are by making that choice. And myself, I have taken on this profession full-fledged and I love it. And I don't need to be a doctor. I mean, I don't want to diagnose, no offense, and I don't want to... Um, I don't want to be in a room adjusting. It wasn't ever my goal. It was my goal to always bring as many people to the profession and how I could do that. And other CAs uh, feel the same way. So when I'm saying professional, the goal is is to make every chiropractic assistant a professional. And that is awesome. And one of the things that, that I say often when I'm training my own staff or teaching various programs I teach is I want to uplift chiropractic professionals in terms of their self-view and their value because often, unfortunately, they don't start out that way and really a, 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 a practitioner that's going to build a good team, a championship team is going to help uplift them. And like even as something that people see as like a simple thing, right? That, yeah. oh, answering the phone. 
And I always tell them, look, if you don't handle the phone incredibly well and like try to be the best at your phone, at the phone in the area, and I know chiropractic professionals do so much more than the phone, but like just as a simple example, if you don't, if you're not the best at the phone of your area, or at least aspire to be that, people will not get care if you don't no. do that, you know? Uh, they're not gonna get on the table. In many ways, that's more important than what the doctor's gonna do with their hands because you're the, like, the gateway to the person getting care. Yes, definitely. And that's great that you recognize that. That is not always recognized throughout every clinic that I meet or even see online or in social media. <laughs> right, and, and then it results in undervaluing teams, which is, yes. which is yeah. a big mistake. So, so let, let's talk more about what, what does a chiropractic professional, what does that mean? What does it mean? It yeah. means somebody who comes to work every single day with the same vision, mission, and purpose as the facility that they're working in the chiropractic home, the clinic, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I've worked in eye clinics. I've helped with the plumbing company that we that my partner owns. It is all about customer service. Uh, being in the profession for 20 years and customer service prior to that, you have to make sure that when you come in every single day that you're on the same vision and mission as the facility, the employer that's hired you. And that's the first thing. Um, it's the whole idea of wanting to be there and wanting to grow. And then it's the systems and procedures. Uh, like I mentioned um, to you and what I wanted to discuss is that there is no emotion <laughs> in management. Um, and there is a reason for that. It comes from the idea that when you have procedures in place and systems, the emotions just tend to come with it. But once you understand that as an employee and as a professional, you will not take offense to when somebody's trying to redirect you into the better growth of the business um, because that's what grows a CA or a chiropractic tech in each state has different roles of what they have which I'm sure you know I mean there's very straight um, clinics that just adjust and then there's some that do those therapies and modalities and x-rays and then there's lots of marketing and each one of those professionals have a role and they have to understand that in that job title there is tasks and jobs to do and it is a lot to take on, but that as a professional is even more than what the doctor is doing, as you stated. Right. And that's okay. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm very glad you bring up that topic about emotion and management because, and you referenced it relative to team members, right? Mm -hmm. It's also a challenge for the doctor because a doctor yeah. can, it's a challenge on both sides of that, right? Can yeah. be concerned about the emotion relative to wanting to direct, redirect, uh, inspire, whatever, and then not share what they feel in their, you know, is appropriate to share relative to management because they're afraid of the emotional response or they're not handling their emotion and how they're going to share it. Exactly. I mean, it goes back to that quote I shared with you that is one of my most favorite quotes from B.J. Palmer, and it's in From Up From Below the Bottom, where he is planning where his, because um, he was the developer and that was his more business aspect of it. If you read in Up From Below the Bottom, he referenced a lot about growth and business and development in between his philosophy. So when he said, keep everlasting on top of detail, for that is what makes or breaks an organization, be kind but stern, be firm but thoughtful, principles are important and so are people. Well, the be, be firm and but be thoughtful is that once you create that relationship with individuals and you set that standard and you inspire them, your firmness will not be a reaction of emotion or them leaving and hating you and not wanting that same vision. Um, understanding that core principle, that mission, in the beginning, all the rest just falls in line. Absolutely, and, and that lack of having standards or firmness or 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 even policies yeah. um, and procedures <laughs> is really what is often the downfall of a chiropractic office, and or the not the downfall, but them not reaching their potential uh, for impact, yeah. and, and and with the price of that is not the chiropractor and it's not the chiropractic team the price of it's the patients that don't get care in that community exactly you have to have those procedures in line and those were not i mean they're not created they're created as a foundation and they're not set there to hurt anyone's feelings and we don't intentionally set something up to say i'm going to do this to pick on one person or the other and that's right. where i think people misplace that a lot of times 
Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So a it, value. let's Doesn't talk about that. In, in a well-run office, wh what are some really important you know, procedures or policies that you think people miss that are like maybe basic and if they did it, it would make a huge difference in their office or, 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 or the team? The number one thing that is missing that I run into in most businesses that I get introduced to that seem to be struggling with relationships is having that office manual that policy, that understanding of the foundation, what are my expectations, what's my mission statement, what's my core value, how do we answer the phone, how do you dress, when your review is going to be, I mean that is every Fortune 500 company has that, that's how you get introduced into any employment. Why do chiropractors and small business owners tend to forget that foundation and that's when the employee turnover happens. Right, right. Well, and it just, you know, having basic standard operating procedures, you know, yep. versus everything's oral, everything's yep. verbal. It's like, oh, you do this. And then the training becomes really intensive versus um, yeah. having it all documented, right? It, well, if you have it, well, if you do it verbally, that's one way. But if you have it documented and in place, you always have a reference to go back to. Right. You know, when something comes to play later. I mean, I just recently reminded myself that in one of our core values in one of the clinics that I'm in is that we need to always reference that when we're doing marketing and education. Like where does where do we go and where do we draw the line? Because when you have so many people in an office, you end up forgetting and you end up bringing motion in or that one didn't feel comfortable and I don't want to do that again. Well, if we go back to what our core marketing goal is, then we won't take that emotion into it and make it seem like we're all up. Right, right, absolutely, absolutely. Now, being a mom of five, which I did not know that about you. Well, three are mine, two are my partners. So we have like five together now. But still, that makes you uh, a mom of five, which yep. is, you know, um, being a mom of five, why is education so vital for a life, you know, lifelong care for families? Um, I wanted to discuss this, and I'm glad that you brought it up. Uh, I, you know, being in the profession for 20 years, I've seen changes. You know, there's always like an ebb and flow with who I run into and who I attract. Uh, one core principle and value that I have taken, and I discuss this um, very lightly, is that I take x-rays. And I do a lot of contraindications and I see what's on x-rays and everyone can decide what they want to do. So being a chiropractic tech, we're taught um, almost as much as doctors. I mean, I don't diagnose and I don't adjust. But outside of that, I can do your intake forms. I know how to write your subjectives. I, you, if you understand my claim. I understand. Um, when it comes to my children, um, I have seen a child who from the birth canal and getting adjusted two days later who had severe scoliosis on day three was vomiting at the fact that I couldn't even, he was just not a good baby. And with chiropractic adjustment and going to a pediatric chiropractor and getting his palate adjusted, getting his spine taken care of, um, he, he's an amazing child, he's 10 now. And he was having breathing issues and through that whole time and the bad birth that I've had, each one of my kids and then now more recently we're dealing with a severe scoliosis and for me I keep thinking that if we didn't look at x-rays and we don't dig deeper where is the longevity in this and when I'm teaching chiropractic philosophy and being in the philosopher of chiropractic the first year program um, we really went through the universal principles and when you have longevity and you have had adaptation and where the body's going to change, our children are so vital and like little specimens. And if we can catch them soon enough and get them corrected to a good spinal flow, because even BJ Palmer and you think about Reggie Gold, they each had different philosophies. But their ultimate goal was to get them to understand that symptoms aren't the cause. It's how you're functioning, what you're doing. And both of these kids were expressing so many symptoms that they were not at their highest potential. But with great chiropractic care, their symptoms are less and they are living and their structure base is going to be phenomenal underneath the right chiropractic care when they get older. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I mean, and that, 
that's one kid who's not mine and one that is. You know, it, right. it, it's different and it's very important in educating that continuously. It wasn't an easy bat. I mean, it wasn't easy at all to get a non-child of mine blood underneath care. Right. And I never forced it and that's a whole nother talk, but right. it's very important. Absolutely. And, and what are some key ways that teams can help their practice members understand that? Like to help them get um, the, the number the one key factor is is the whole, you know, you are you there education. Um, knowing that it's okay to suggest to hand out pamphlets of information, um, to probe conversations on is your child being checked? Uh, why would they get checked? If you hear anyone with symptoms, there that's that whole selling aspect. People are afraid to sell, which we sell every single day. You go to the grocery store and there's stuff on the side selling you candy bars and crap and you're on TV and they're selling you stuff. We were brought into this world. Our children sell to us daily. I don't want a vacuum. You know, and <laughs> So when you're in your office, the only barrier you're putting in yourself is the one that you're allowing. And your right. doctor is never going to tell you not to have somebody get checked for care. That's right. the one thing that I do instill on my CAs is you can plant the seeds of handing brochures. I mean, the best thing I ever got given to me is my first two weeks in a chiropractic office with my oldest now, 15, my best friend, Molly. She's still a CA, too. We She handed me over... A Bill Esteb a patient media flyer highlighted and said, you need to get Stephanie in right now with her ears. And I was like, what? <laughs> really? And then I went back to the doctor and he handed me media. You know, everyone listens and learns in a different way. And I like to read. So you have to find out what your patients learn from. As you know, we all have cognitive right. skills. Right. A absolutely. And, you know, I've, I've in 17 years of practice in the current location, I've had more team members that I would like to admit during that time frame. You know, I would love to say I had one, you know, the same team members for 15 years, but that's not the case. Um, um, but I, you know, I've trained lots of people and I will tell you this, when you have team members, which I do right now, that are excited to, and I will use the bad four letter word, sell chiropractic, right? You know? Yeah. When, when they're excited to sell chiropractic and enthusiastic about it, it makes your life so much easier. When they're, you know, e you know just excited to, 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 to teach people um, and be, at, you know, be adamant about your kids need to be checked and you be on, on your visits, like that's all selling. And when they're excited about that, it makes your life so much easier as a practitioner. Oh, definitely. I mean, and it actually makes the whole office better. It, right. It's the whole energy level you bring around it. It's not just on you. It's he wants me to do this. She wants me to do this. It's I want to do this. Right. I want to bring more people in. It's Absolutely. exciting to see healthy people, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, hiring training teams, let's talk about that a little bit. What are some keys to successfully hiring? Um, one of the most successful aspects that I have found more recently is the pre-screening aspect. Okay. Uh, understanding where to go and how to hire and what you're looking for. So you have to set up that ideal team member that you want, what you're filling, and being completely honest with it. You can't put out, I want to hire an office manager and then put them in marketing. You know, I, I want to hire an insurance person and then you have them at the front desk. You have to be extremely open and honest with your hours. Um, you're going to pay, base on a, pay it on based on experience. And then once you're hiring them, you want to interview them. Uh, I love my little training tool I just gave out recently that our company um, likes to use, and it's something that Zappo does, I believe, is that they send out um, a pre-screening email. And we have five questions that we send out, and we ask them things like, what is your take on health care? What is your take on chiropractic? Where do you see yourself in two to five years? Uh, you kind of get an insight on the person, and I'll tell you, out of like 100 applicants on some of the places that I'm hired to help fill the teams, only four or five will return. And then you're cutting down your time on that. So those are some of the hiring things that I do besides meeting them one-on-one -on -one and getting to know them on site, figure out if they want to be part of the team, have them join you for a day. Those are some of the best tools that I've used. Outstanding. You know, and, and I... I love that pre-screening 
concept. Imagine that. Yeah, it's free screening. Give me a Not everybody. <laughs> you know, and, and it comes to, you know, proper planning. That, yep. that all has to do with proper planning. And so much in chiropractic, sadly, people go into practice and thinking just these are going to build the practice. And, you know, it's not going to happen that way. You, you have to do some strategizing up here, you know, really well. Okay, and what about some tips, some tips for training teams? Like, I know offices, they don't do any training or meetings or, or anything. And I know offices that, I know, like you're, you're, you're starting to <laughs> have an emotional reaction. But, you know, there are. Oh, and then yes. there's ones that train every day. Like, what are some keys, like, in the training area? Um, well, well, key for, first of all, is to not leave your CA at home when you go to an event. <laughs> and I'm going to say that. I didn't get this way because I sat in a clinic all the time. I've been to Parker for years. I've gone to state associations. I've been to training. This was prior to me getting on a stage at New Beginnings right. 10 years ago. Right. So, and I tell people all the time, I say, don't go to a program without your staff. I say it all the time. All the time. <laughs> you cannot leave them at home. You have to, if you want them to value what you're doing, and I get it, it's not, it's not cheap. I mean, I get it, but set goals for everyone. If you want to go to Vegas or you want to go to Mile High or you want to go out east and you want to go to the Berkshires, you know, you have to tell your team ahead of time, hey, you want to go to this, let's set some goals. Right. And once they understand what you're doing, take them along, even if it's one or two, like say you got four or five team members and you're going to pick one or two this time. It's a lottery. Right. And it's kind of like a winning aspect. Everyone likes to win. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, that's one. Two is that training monthly. Um, some of my teams, we do it, we do it bi-weekly in the clinic I'm in. We go through our regular meeting um, agenda, we review, and then we pick our role-playing topics or our review of our office manual. And we pull out um, actions that we want to run through, either it be the new patient entry, uh, the consult, um, how we're doing our exams. You know, you pick it, you have to be one-on-one, -on -one and you have to discuss it. Or let's go through some marketing. You have to be working one-on-one -on -one together once to twice a month at a minimum. Absolutely, and I agree. And, you know, we meet, we meet, one of the, I like your feedback. This is the training I do. So <laughs> let's do like a little consult. You tell me if this is a good plan or not, right? And yeah. so this will, this will help people too. When we it do will. in our office, right, is that we have a meeting every week and it goes from 45 minutes to if we're doing lots of training it could be two hours okay mm -hmm. but we you know once a week we do that one and we try to alternate meeting with training so one week it might be more meeting and planning and then the other week we may more emphasize training yeah. so it's kind of an every other week thing when we bring on a new team member we up that because maybe there's something they have to learn like an initial evaluation script Right. Yep. So then we have either myself or a team member, a rotation of team members that are with that new person every day. So they have like a, a half hour slot Like you're with them half hour every single day or I am. We rotate it. How does that sound? Is that am I making a good decision with that or you're, not? You're making a great decision. <laughs> Um, it gets all those jitters out and you actually form relationships that way. Um, one of our clinics, we call it clearing. You know, you clear out all that hesitation because some of us are introverts and some of us are extroverts. And you have to, if you don't form out and create in that same culture together, what makes you think that you'll express it out? It's no different than an adjustment. You know, you can give an adjustment. You can, right? You give right. an adjustment to somebody, but that body, that person that you gave that to does the expression of it. It's mm -hmm. the same training. If you're not, you can give all you want to them, but if they're not getting the feedback back and forth, they're not going to be able to express it to the practice members, the patients that come in daily. Yeah, absolutely. And, and now let me ask you another question. Well, I've got this incredible chiropractic professional oh, here. You're cutting out a little. Are, are we ah. back? It, that happens. Are we back? Okay. All right. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, you're back. All right. So. Commercial. Okay. I'll ask you another good chiropractic. Well, I have this stellar chiropractic professional here. i got to ask this other question. Okay. okay? So. Well, put the heat on. <laughs> oh, now I'm laughing. I'm going to forget the question. <laughs> All right. So here's, here's another area that happens with, with teams is what do you do when you have a team member 
that may be reluctant to go to an event? <laughs> I have plenty of those. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my hard side right now. I actually think that they should not be part of the team. Mm. Part of me wants to always say you're replaceable. Because if your mission in the beginning and what you're what you hired them for says are you willing to travel? Are you willing to do things? And they've said yes and yes, then I need to know what their barrier is and why they're making the excuses not to go. Got Does it. that make sense? Right. Well yeah. Especially it's always since, falling back. Especially since you have five kids. So that makes a yeah. lot of sense because that's often one of the barriers. Could be family and time and kids and how do I juggle that happening? And I know when I travel to things, I have to figure out how to make that work and team members have to make it a priority to do that. And I'm sure obviously you have in, in many ways, right? Yeah, um, it, it's that excuse factor. People have a tendency to make more excuses or there's actually an underlining cause, which you and I never know what's going on at people's homes. Right. And that's when I say, to you, say, what was that procedure in the beginning? What was that agreement, that policy? And now why has it changed? Right. Uh, that's one thing you have to find out. So it's why aren't they traveling? What did we set up in the beginning? Twice, what can we do to make this happen? Do we need to bring in training into the office? And how valuable is this team member long, longevity-wise? Like, right. are they staying? What do I put into them? Or are they just a person filling a space and you don't really care? And they're in the, I mean, every situation is different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I appreciate you sharing all that. Now, let's go to the other yeah. side of that. All right. How about doctors? What would you like to see doctors do more that they just don't do for their teams that they would get such you know better out of their team you know if they if if you saw you saw doctors step up something um the first thing is communication um doctors have a tendency to communicate more to their fellow chiropractors and mentors and they're in their doctor heads um more than they're in their team personal relationships uh, most of the most of the clinics that have become extremely successful is when they've come out of their box and they've shared an event like we're all gonna go horseback riding mm -hmm. we're all gonna go to you know lunch together we're all gonna go see a movie together it's mm -hmm. that creating a relationship that's the one thing I like to see more out of doctors um, that I think feel that they create more of a successful team atmosphere longevity with their employees and a stronger office inside out um, and the second one would be is I would like doctors to be more congruent with their care um, mm. following through. Uh, I, I struggle with the idea that we're focused on news all the time and we're not looking at long-term relationship within our patients and practice members. Uh, so once you're congruent with what your focus is and your outcome um, right in the beginning, you, you will have a better turnaround in the long run. Absolutely, and I agree. Now, now, um, one last topic. Okay, <laughs> look at you. Maybe, maybe, maybe not, maybe more. I just enjoy talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, how about helping inspire um, teams, team members living a chiropractic lifestyle? I will share that each seed that you plant and the right person at the right time, as you and I know, will attract what they want in their life. So all you can do is plant seeds. I have had an amazing circle of mentors for years. I feel that my calling is chiropractic because of who I've been attracted to, where the universe has set me, God. Um, when it comes to team members, it's paying attention to what they need and want and actually listening to them. Uh, my chiropractor that I worked for, Dr. David Holtrup, I don't know if you know, um, when I mentioned that I worked at an office in a pediatric chiropractic clinic for eight years and he was my mentor. And within the first month there, the other CA wanted to fire me. Mm -hmm. I was too excited, too happy. I was chatty, and she was more of the introvert. Um, and she was quieter. He said to her, and this yet to this day, and he's 
he passed away in 2009, and I still have this in my head, is that he said, Dana has something, and there's a reason why she's here. So when I think in my own mind is when we hire team members, and if the doctors see that glimpse of something, it, and the CA actually hears you say that, they will work harder for you. It's the words. It's the understanding of the relationships. It's the inspiring. Getting them um, books on chiropractic philosophy. I mean, some of the greatest things that I have read and that have inspired me are green books. <laughs> right. Chiropractic philosophers group. I Reggie Gold. I mean, I've even sent my Mike, who is my partner. He was he was seeing chiropractor for years, and to get him more inspired, I had him listen to Reggie Gold's 1970s interview, and he's so floored. Like, really? That was an issue. So you, I mean, just wait for people to ask you, and then give them. You know, I had something amazing happen that I'll mention. It was a big chiropractic team member win, which is this. Now, we're insured by Chiro Futures. Chiro Futures is one of the premier sponsors of Mile High. And I know mm -hmm. you know Dr. Matthew yep. McCoy. Yep. And, love um, him, love him, love yeah, Matthew. <laughs> love Matthew McCoy, love Chiro Futures, and all the research they put out with, uh, and so we referred someone to them, and they sent us a book. It was Mental Health and Chiropractic. Mm -hmm. And my team member said, look, this is yesterday, you, you look what you got in the mail. I said, oh, that's really cool. And I was like surprised and excited for the referral thank you, which he didn't need to do, but that's that's a good customer service business model as we encourage in chiropractic, right? Uh, and all customer service industries are gonna encourage something along that. So I was like, wow, that's really awesome. And my front desk team member says, can I take this home? I really wanna read it. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was, I, I'm glad to give it to her. And when you have a team member that that's their initial response, yeah, you that's get excited. I mean, it, it is, it's amazing things that inspire you as an individual. Um, it's the, you know, when you're in a team, you have to find out. And I say there's the, the five love languages, if you've ever heard of it. Yep, um, yep. There is the five appreciation. Um, and it's by workplace. Yep. You yep. By the same, and if you do that, you'll understand where the person is coming from. So your your team member, you know, maybe hers was just, you know, she saw the gift, she saw somebody give it, she likes to read, and she's just that embraced on the healing aspect. Right. You yep. have to be disinspired. Mine was Phyllis Fraze in a 2000, and um, I think it was like 2002. Parker seminar and she said get up on your chair her and Melanie Engel at a CA conference and Melanie Engel's from Canada and I still remember this day where I got up on the chair and four of my other team members go what are you doing and I said she told us to get up on the chair and I don't know why we would do it why would you do it <laughs> so I, I refer to that because at that moment I thought I want to do that but I never thought that it would get to this right. so your team member probably has that in the back of her head. Right. What can I do to be more involved in this giving and sharing of this wonderful gift? Right. And when you see that, you want to praise it and be extremely excited. So, yeah. And so, where I know people are going to love listening to this podcast and it's inspire them to do better with their teams. They may even share with their team members to listen to. And it'll also probably inspire them to bring their teams to Mile High, which is also outstanding. Yay. Now, where can people catch up with you next? Where is it, I know you get around to lots of chiropractic events. Where, where people might see you next? Um, I was just in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh -huh. I got to see Dr. Lyle, and that was fun. Awesome. Um, next event, I am with Dr. Jay Morgan. He's invited me out there to share with his group for the third time. Uh, then after there, I'm kind of st I picked only a couple events every year, and what I feel like now, um, I'm mostly with my clients on site. Uh, this year, speaking is coming to an end. Unless I get invited or somebody wants me more, I will see if it works with my family, as we talked about. They can always catch me at pmnaworks.com. Um, they can email me at dana at pmnaworks.com. I take questions. I do consults. You can let me know if you need me. I When people wonder, what do you mean on-site coaching? I actually have flown all over <laughs> the country. So we, I make it feasible for you and I to get together 
and I love it. It's kind of just a fun thing. And you can find me just messaging me on Facebook as well. <laughs> that's true. That's usually how I find you. <laughs> yeah. Facebook has been phenomenal. All those who say that it's not great for marketing, you and I could probably tell them that's not true. <laughs> you just have to know how to, to share valuable information with people. So, yeah, exactly. Well, I really appreciate you. All that contact information is going to be in the blog post. It will be a blog post with this that people will see. So um, we'll have all your contact information. You shared some great links to YouTube videos too. So we'll, we'll have those in there. Um, any last things that you would like to share? Um, if you're talking about chiropractic professionals, Dr. Thomas Lamar does the radio podcast yes. as well. I've been interviewed by him, and if your team members want to hear great chiropractic philosophy, old school chiropractic, even CAs that have been out there in the profession, the CA should definitely go to Dr. Thomas Lamar because you know and I know that that spinal column radio is a great thing, and it's easy training, it's a reference. And I just want to add that, and I know I didn't give that to you initially, but it oh, is we'll one that it. just we'll came to me. We'll put it in the blog. And, and, and let's, let's close with this. This is a good one. Since we talk about green books, and you know, not many people are, are chiropractic professionals and have you know, taken the philosophy classes and courses that you have, right? Mm -hmm. What is your favorite or your go-to chiropractic book to give a new team member? Me? Yeah. Um, I, I have to just wait. Well, first of all, <laughs> I always want chiropractic assistants to let me know what who they are and what they're doing. Right. So I have them generally find um, our philosophy for each office, and I give it to them. But my number one, and I have to reach over, over my desk, wait a minute, is the textbook of chiropractic philosophy. So I do have them start this book, and this is by Rob Sennett. Um, right. It was given to me when I initially needed to be touched more in chiropractic, and I think that CAs should definitely have this as a basic. And Excellent. It, 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 to me, I want people to understand that it's not about changing your philosophy as a chiropractor or a chiropractic assistant. It's about understanding the foundation and then understanding the doctor's philosophy. There's two different things. There's the right. chiropractic philosophy, and then there's the doctor's philosophy and how they give care. And then once you combine those and understand those without judgment, things begin to flow. Absolutely. Now I'll share my favorite and we'll close. Okay. With my favorite, my go-to one every time I hire someone and I get is I get the Triune of Life, Reggie Gold. Oh. And oh, I give yeah. that to them as a, as a first book. Here you go. You, you, you read that. And I'll tell you, the last time I gave that to one of my new team members, there was a day or two later and she had started reading it. She said, I had no idea that chiropractic was really about the body's organization. And I was like, <laughs> love it. That's a great start. <laughs> I'll have to trade that one in for my senior CAs then. I'll make there, them do this first and then make them do the second there one. There you go. There you go. Yeah, it's a, it's a great one to get from Sherman College. So excellent. Well, Dana, I, I always love getting to spend time with you and connecting with you. And um, this is a real treat. And I know it's going to be a real treat from everybody else. And um, please, if you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone else and I know you will enjoy it. It's not a question mark. So after you do it and, and, and also uh, subscribe to us on iTunes um, as well as uh, any other channels would, that you tend to use. And I'm sure this is going to be one of our most played ones because people really need help with getting uh, rock star teams, you know, world class teams in their offices. Thank you for having me. It's been a blessing. And you're, I love speaking with you as well. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll remind everybody to join us at Mile High, August 17th to 20th, and Permanent Inc., and get your plane tickets and reserve your hotel and all of that. And we look forward to seeing you on higher ground. Like our page on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Mile High Cairo.